Hi everyone, welcome to 4 Teachers. As I know a lot of teachers have started their first year of teaching this year, I decided to make a video talking about all the things that used to stress me out, or worry me, or make me feel really uncomfortable at the start of my teaching career, and really just explain how my attitude towards these things has changed over the last couple of years that I have been teaching, and how I am more confident in certain areas than I was at the start. Hopefully listening to me talk about these things will make you feel a little bit more comfortable about making some of these mistakes yourself, and hopefully I can help you guys to feel a little bit less worried about them too. Just a little bit of context before I start explaining these things that used to worry me. I have just started my seventh year of teaching so there are things that still worry me, there are still things that I find really difficult as a teacher but I think over the seven years that I have been teaching as a full-time class teacher certain things have become easier and I've started to realise that certain things that I used to stress about maybe weren't such a big deal and I shouldn't have wasted so much time worrying about them so hopefully listening to me talk about these things will help you to feel a little bit more grounded and a little bit more confident about your first year of teaching. So the first thing that used to really, really worry me and stress me out, and I used to hate when this happened, was any time that I was late with my class to some kind of whole school event. For example, and you might have had this happen to you already, you are sat doing some kind of activity with your class, maybe you're having a discussion, maybe they're doing some classwork, and suddenly you realise, or maybe one of the students realises and remembers that you are supposed to be downstairs for some kind of introduction assembly or some kind of whole school event, and you have forgotten about it and you are going to be late. I don't know about you guys, but this stresses me out so much. I have to suddenly get all of the students up from the task that they're doing. I have to get them into the corridor, down the corridor, maybe down some stairs, into an assembly hall. And when you walk in late to wherever you're supposed to be with your class, I always feel as though I'm so worried about the looks that I get from the other teachers that are in there. I always feel like they're judging me for being late and judging me for forgetting something. And it makes me, honestly, it makes me so uncomfortable and so, so worried. Even now, if I forget something, I do feel uncomfortable. I think it does happen to almost all teachers at some point. So it is something that I think we can all relate to on some sort of level. But I can promise you it is not worth worrying about if it happens to you or more when it happens to you. Try to just relax, try to just be mindful and think to yourself, well, I've made a mistake, I've forgotten my timing, it's no big deal, the students are still going to be able to engage in whatever I'm late to or if they've missed something, it's really not going to be the end of the world for the students, I promise you. And just to give you some further context as to why you shouldn't worry about this very much, I have seen teachers who have been teaching for five years, ten years, even more, and they occasionally will forget a meeting. It's something that happens to everyone and it's something that will probably continue to happen throughout your career, assuming that you're not absolutely excellent at time management, which you might be. I don't know. <laughs> but if you could try to get into the habit of not being annoyed at yourself and not putting yourself down for making the occasional mistake like this, and I wish that I had been a little bit more relaxed about some of the mistakes that I made during my first year of teaching. The next thing that I used to be really worried about doing as a new school teacher was using the technology in the school. Now this one actually comes as a big surprise to myself because I am a really keen user of technology. I remember being really, really worried about getting the laptop trolley out with the students for the first time because it would take them so long to log in, it would take them so long to get their username sorted, some of the laptops wouldn't be charged and I would get stressed out trying to find plug sockets for students to use and it sometimes felt like I would get to the end of a lesson and the students wouldn't be logged on and I would feel as though a lot of the things that I'd planned had gone to waste and a lot of the ideas that I had were just not being implemented in the way that I thought they would. And I think that the advice I would give to new teachers here is please, please, ask for help when you are first setting up new technology in your classroom. I know this sounds completely obvious and like something you would have thought of anyway, but a lot of the time I used to try really hard to get all the laptops out or all the iPads out and I used to try and set up the entire class at the same time with no support and no assistance. And there should be someone in your school who is willing to come and lend a hand, whether that's someone who's in charge of IT support, whether that's just a teacher that has some good knowledge of technology and has done this before with their class many times, 
Feel free to go and ask that teacher if they are able to get some kind of release time and they are able to come and help assist you in your class. Another top tip would be try not to set up the entire class using technology at the exact same time. Consider taking a small group. Just let them have that process of using the tech in the classroom and then signing back out and you can do that in small groups. You don't have to do that whole class. I feel like this used to stress me out a lot and it definitely is not something that stresses me out now. I absolutely love using technology in the classroom but I just take things a little bit slower I take things at my own pace and I always make sure that first lesson where I use some whole class technology I ask for someone to come in and just help to support the class also quick side note a lot of the students that I have worked with are really really tech savvy give them the opportunities to show other children how to get logged on let them show to other students how to use apps and websites if there's a child in the classroom that's really talented and knows what they're doing and perhaps even knows what they're doing better than you do as a teacher, allow them to teach that part of that class. Let them stand up and show everyone how to log in and go around and support small groups. I think certain children really rise to the occasion when it's an opportunity to present and share their knowledge with other children and it can take a little bit of stress off you as a teacher as well. The next thing that I used to worry about all the time and I really don't know why because it's so not something that you should worry about at all is playing music in the classroom with the children. That sounds absolutely ridiculous, like why would that make me so worried? But for ages and ages I really wanted to have one of those lovely classrooms where the children listen to music in the morning when they come in and one of those classrooms where while the children are writing we might put some music on in the background and it will help to calm them and it will help to build a really positive atmosphere but I used to find it really really difficult to find appropriate music that my students would enjoy and that would create the right vibe for our classroom. I also used to find it really really scary trying to find music that had appropriate lyrics in it for example, you would think that putting on an acoustic pop playlist would be fine for students, it would be relaxing, but actually some of the lyrics in there can be quite rude as well, and that used to make me feel really uncomfortable knowing that I could put a playlist on and everything could be going so well, and then maybe a word would creep up that shouldn't be said in class and the students would freak and then they would go home and tell their families and I would maybe get in trouble, and I just used to spend so much time really wanting to implement this into my classroom, but not knowing how to do it. So what I have been doing for the last couple of years is when the students first come into the classroom in the morning I will normally have some piano playing in the background. My favourite piano tracks to have on in the background are the Greatest Showman piano soundtrack. The students absolutely love having this on in the background in the morning. I will also go on to YouTube and I will just type in calm piano music for relaxation, for study, for children and I will just put some of those on in the background maybe. Occasionally I will also type in Disney piano soundtrack and I will play some of those through. The students love that because they can guess what the song is but they have to concentrate quite a lot in order to hear the piano and try and work out what film it is from so I feel like it allows them the chance to concentrate on the calming music that is on in the background while they settle for the day or I might put this on while we do some writing it's really nice as well. I even put piano music on the other day when the parents came into my classroom for the first time for the first meeting and I feel like it created a really calm and positive atmosphere even then for the parents too. Also if you are ever having a party in your classroom or a celebration in your classroom and you do want some pop music to get the children dancing, to get the children having a good time in the party, I would recommend using Kids Bop. One of my teacher friends recommended this to me recently and I have to say it is the most useful thing to have in class ever. It is all the songs that your students will know and love and enjoy but thankfully all of the rude words have been taken out of the songs and they have been made completely appropriate for use in your classroom. I wish I had known about kids bop in my first year of teaching, when I had my first Christmas party, when I had my first end of year party. I feel like it would have taken a lot of the stress out of playing music with my students. Some of the next points that I want to mention I'm going to do quite quickly because I feel as though this might end up being quite a long video but I still have quite a few points that I want to mention so I'm going to try and compress them slightly and just give a little bit less detail but I still think they're relevant and I still think they're important. So something else that used to worry me was knowing when to call it quit 
fits with a topic or with something that the students are learning. I used to worry if the students weren't enjoying something but I had planned a lot of stuff for that particular unit or that particular topic. I used to find it really scary knowing when enough was enough and when to just move the students on. For example I once taught a writing unit all about myths and legends and actually the students weren't giving me a positive reaction to this unit and they just didn't seem to really be enjoying it very much. It would just seem as though they were not enthused about what it was that I was presenting to them. They didn't seem to be getting much out of the stories, they didn't seem to be getting too involved with the characters. So I had to know that it was time to sort of let that go and cancel and move on and that's quite hard to do as a teacher because you feel worried like somebody might tell you stick to your plan or Somebody might say, oh, you're getting ahead of yourself with your um, unit, you need to take a step back and go in deeper and find some other ways to challenge the students to do with this topic. But I think sometimes you know in your heart and the students are kind of telling you that they're done with something. So you need to know when it's time to move on. And that's something that used to worry me a lot as a teacher. And I'm really glad that now I kind of pick up on the signs. I might try to re-inspire the students about something, but I think now that I'm a more confident teacher, I know when it's time to say enough is enough and move on to something brand new. <laughs> Another point here that I've put a star next to because I think it is really important is displays. I think I used to worry a lot about what my classroom environment looked like and I still do worry about that. I still do want my classroom to look nice and I still want the children to feel a sense of ownership within the classroom but in the past I used to get very very worried about other teachers coming and checking my displays and the things that I had to have on certain displays and I used to panic about getting them looking nice and making sure that work was backed on the wall and making sure that everything looked perfect. I think it's nice to have something exciting in the classroom that the students can relate to. For example, this year my reading corner has a shark, which the students absolutely love. But I think as teachers we fall into the trap of thinking that our classrooms should look a certain way. And as I have grown as a teacher, I am much more likely now to allow my students the chance to design areas of the classroom themselves. I like to give my students more ownership. I like to ask them, what do you think would look nice on our maths display? What would help you? What language do you think we should put up here? What is relevant to our unit? Can you create some keywords for me rather than typing them myself and printing them? I think it's so much nicer to let the students have some ownership of their environment and try not to worry if your classroom doesn't look like another person's classroom because they aren't supposed to look the same. It's supposed to be different for students every year that they travel through school. And actually that point about displays in your classroom leads me really nicely onto my next point, which is something that I used to worry about all the time and maybe sometimes still will worry about and I think maybe it's normal to still worry about and actually it's okay to still worry about this from time to time and that is comparing yourself to other teachers. There is always going to be someone that does things differently to you, there is always going to be teachers with different styles to you, there are always going to be people who seem to be on top of everything and seem to have their timetable sorted first and their planning sorted first and all their resources made and looking beautiful and I just really 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 want to stress the importance of not worrying about what other people are doing. I think it is amazing to be inspired by people and it is amazing to look at what people are doing and think oh could I implement that somehow into my own classroom would that be useful for my students as well but please do not worry Worry that you are not doing things the same way as someone else. Especially if you see people online that are posting their classrooms and you think they look beautiful and your classroom doesn't look the same way and especially if somebody on the corridor that you're working on just always seems to have their students lined up so beautifully and always seems to be on time for everything and always seems to be praised in staff meetings. Little things like that can build up and they can start to wreck you and they can start to make you feel really negative and that's exactly what you need to avoid during your first year and all of your years <laughs> spent teaching. There are so many more things that I could have included in this video. There are plenty of things that worry me as a teacher on a daily basis but I'm working on that. I'm working on trying to become a really positive educator. I'm trying to work on letting the small things go and concentrating on the big picture and trying to have a really fun time while I'm teaching. It 
it can be done, you can find a balance, and hopefully as you progress through your teaching journey, you will find ways to be more balanced, and you will know which small things are things that are gonna stress you out, that you can try to push away, and which things make you feel really good as an educator. What do you enjoy about work? What do you enjoy about being a teacher? I think there's probably a lot of things that are hidden away that you really, really enjoy, and it's much better to try and focus on those areas in order to become a more well-rounded and happier educator. If you have found anything in today's video useful, please let me know by giving the video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to 4 Teachers if you haven't done so already. Please let me know in the comments down below if there is anything that I could make to help support you further as a teacher. And thank you so much for watching this video.